Hey PES family, Miss Mano back again to finish up our read aloud. But before I begin, just a few announcements. Remember that on Monday, we have a new math packet coming out, so make sure you check our website, PES website. Um, click on those learn that learning resources tab where you should be able to find that new math packet. Or if you go to pick up lunch anyways, remember you can swing by any of the schools and grab those packets as well as lunch. Um, I know I got the chance to do some shout outs on Monday with our read aloud, but I have a few more friends who were working hard this week that I want to give shout outs to. I want to give shout outs to Jaden H., for getting onto extra math and doing an awesome job practicing those facts. Unfortunately, I didn't have that many friends on IXL or on Get Epic this week, but hopefully we can pick that up next week. Um, my friends who were on Raz Kids and working real hard reading those stories, getting onto Head Sprout, practicing on those episodes, McKenna, Luke, Kendall. Awesome job, guys. Keep up that hard work. Remember to be getting onto those apps. Try to do it every day, even if it's just for 10 minutes or so. Pick one and try to get on there to keep the skills that we were working on in third grade fresh so that you're ready when fourth grade comes. Um, before we finish up our book, our joke of the day. Why do bees have sticky hair? Hmm, I don't know. Why do bees have sticky hair? Because they use a honeycomb. Right. I want to thank Scholastic for giving us the permission to read this story to you guys and post it on YouTube. When Miss Catlett left off, Ralph had fallen asleep in uh, Karen's, yes, in Karen's sleeping bag. And he, the next thing he knew was that the sleeping bag was moving. So he had fallen asleep too long. He was planning to take a short nap, but that nap lasted longer than he wanted it to. Drat, thought Ralph. Now I've done it. He heard the muffled sound of boots being thrown on the floor. The cot beneath him heaved, and a sudden weight seemed to flatten Ralph, even though he was cushioned by the dacron. Ralph could not help himself. He squeaked. The weight pressing on him was removed instantaneously. The springs bounced. Two feet hit the floor, and Ralph heard Karen's muffled voice say, That's funny. I'm sure I heard a squeak. It's your springs, silly, said another girl. No, said Karen. It was more like a mouse, and it was right under me. Quiet, girls. It's rest time, said the counselor. I'd better get out of here, thought Ralph, crawling out of his dacron nest, nest and in between the two layers of flannel lining. As he started toward what he hoped was the open end, he heard the swishing sound of the zipper. The top of the sleeping bag was thrown back, and Ralph was exposed for all to see. Yeek! Squealed Karen. It's a mouse! And he isn't even squished! Ralph leaped to the floor and was aware of a double row of girls staring at him from their bunks. He darted toward an over overturned riding boot, realized that he would be trapped inside, and darted the other way without knowing where he was going. Now all the girls were squealing. Catch him! Don't let him get away! Isn't he darling? He isn't darling in my sleeping bag, said Karen. Sa 
sock clad feet hit the floor. Get a wash bin, someone yelled. Catch him under a wash bin. Girls, cried the counselor. Ralph darted this way and that. No matter which way he ran, he met feet. He was frantic. He knew he had to find a way to escape before someone clapped something over him. The screen door creaked, so he knew someone had run outside for the basin. A hat, someone shouted. Where's a hat? In his panic, Ralph ran up and over a foot in a white sock. Its owner screamed. Sam, alerted by the scream, began to bark. A straw cowboy hat plopped down on the concrete floor, making a dark dome over Ralph. The daylight that shone between the straws seemed like the starlight to a mouse. Look, shrieked Karen, a hole in my sleeping bag. He chewed a big hole right in my sleeping bag. Sam, frantic to protect the girls, scrabbled his paws against the screen door. It's only me, squeaked Ralph, but no one could hear him. Ralph was alert, waiting for someone to lift the hat so that he could make a dash. If not for a knot hole, at least for the shelter of a bunk. There's something in the hole in my sleeping bag, cried Karen. My watch! Look, it's my missing watch! Feet went padding to Karen's bunk. The screen door opened. One set of dog footprints and two sets of human footsteps entered. Those of the girl who had gone for the wash bin and those of someone else. Girls, what is going on in here? asked Aunt Jill. This is supposed to be rest time. Ralph could hear Sam sniffing, snuffling around in circles with his nose to the floor. The girls all tried to speak at once, but Karen managed to tell about the finding of the watch. So Garf couldn't have taken it, said another girl. And we have the mouse in person right here under the hat, said another. Sam's nose came to a halt at the hat brim. Hey, Sam, it's only me, squeaked Ralph in alarm. He was relieved to have Sam sit and begin to pant. Ralph pressed his eye to a crack in the straw and saw Sam's long pink tongue hanging out. But what I don't understand, said Karen, is how the watch got inside the hole. A mouse couldn't put it there. You'll never know, thought Ralph in grim amusement. Aunt Jill, what shall we do with the mouse? Ralph heard one of the girls ask. We're going to scoop him up in this wash bin. Not if I can help it, thought Ralph. Why don't we give him to Garth, suggested Aunt Jill. I'm sure he misses his mouse, and I know his feelings were hurt because some people thought he had taken the watch. Good idea, agreed Karen. Well, thought Ralph, that takes care of a lot of things. When the brim of the hat was lifted and the rim of the plastic wash bin scraped against the floor, Ralph hopped into the basin and with hat still over, held over him, felt himself being lifted. Then the hat was raised a few inches on one side of the basin and Ralph saw a row of eyes staring at him. Ralph could not help trembling, even though he was sure he had nothing to fear. He's so little, said one of the girls, marveling. Aunt Jill, he looks an awful lot like Garf's mouse, said Karen. You don't suppose? One mouse looks pretty much like another, said Aunt Jill briskly. Now, girls, back to your bunks. I'll take the mouse to Garf. Darkness fell on Ralph as she replaced the hat over the basin. Ralph felt himself being carried out of the girls' lodge and passed the craft shop, where he could hear Chum gnawing at the bars of his cage. Poor old Chum. He heard the door of Garf's lodge being opened. Garf, whispered Aunt Jill. Wake up, wake up. I have something for you. Huh? said Garf sleepily. Waking a sleepy boy on a hot summer afternoon is not easy. I have a mouse for you, said Aunt Jill. A mouse? 
Ralph could tell Garf was wide awake now. Let me see. Ralph sat quietly in the basin while the hat was cautiously lifted. He could see the other boys and their counselor sprawled in sleep on their bunks and on a ledge over Garf's lower bunk, he saw his crash helmet. Karen found him in a hole in her sleeping bag, Angela explained, and it was the strangest thing. She found her missing watch inside the hole. Ralph saw that Aunt Jo was studying him thoughtfully. No kidding, exclaimed Garf, forgetting to keep his voice down. Yes, whispered Aunt Jill, and the girls thought you might like to have the mouse. I sure would, whispered Garf. I think we can bend the cage back into shape, said Aunt Jill. Can I keep him here in the basin, asked Garf. He might escape, said Aunt Jill, but he's your mouse. She smiled and slipped quietly out of the lodge. You did it, whispered Garf. Sure I did it, said Ralph, but do I have to sit here in this basin? Of course not, answered Garf, holding out his hand. Ralph leaped into Garf's palm, and Garf gently moved his, tan, moved his hand down close to his pocket, and there, as he hoped, was his motorcycle. In the warm and cozy darkness, he ran his paws over the handlebars, the plastic seat, the wheels, the exhaust pipe. The motorcycle was intact, and it was his once more. He had earned it. Ralph popped back out of the pocket. You aren't going to make me go back into that cage, are you? He asked. Not if you promise not to run away. I'm taking you back to the inn tomorrow, remember? You haven't forgotten your promise about the motorcycle, have you? Asked Ralph, just to be sure. Nope answered Garf. I won't run away, promised Ralph, but there's one more thing. Before you leave camp, do you suppose you could give Chum a piece of wood to gnaw so he won't have to gnaw his cage to keep his teeth worn down? Why, sure, whispered Garf, right after rest time. That need taken care of Ralph made Ralph feel better about Chum alone in the craft shop. He was about to climb back into the pocket when Garf whispered, Do me a favor, will you? Let me see you ride the motorcycle before everybody wakes up. Sure! Ralph was happy to agree to this request. Gently, Garf lifted Ralph and the motorcycle to the floor. Then he handed down the crash helmet, which Ralph set on his head and secured by snapping the rubber band under his chin. Expertly, he grasped the handle grips, threw his leg over the plastic seat, and taking care to keep his tail out of the spokes, inhaled. <laughs> Ralph took off across the concrete floor while Garth leaned over the edge of his bunk to watch. Ralph bent down low over his handlebars and increased his speed. <laughs> Filled with joy and excitement of speed, he rode in a figure eight around Garf's cowboy boots, which were lying on the floor. Garf's counselor moved in his sleep, and Ralph shot out of sight under Garf's bunk until the counselor lay still. He rode until he was breathless, and then he coasted to a stop in front of Garf, where he sat panting with his crash helmet pushed back on his head. Boy, whispered Garf, was that ever great? Ralph silently agreed. I sure wish I could do that. Garf picked up Ralph and the motorcycle and put them gently in his pocket. After all the excitement of the morning, Ralph was ready for a nap. But first he popped his head out of Garf's pocket. Thanks, friend, he said. And by the way, don't roll over on me during rest time. Don't worry, whispered Garf. I'll get you back to the inn in one piece. And your motorcycle, too. And that is how Runaway Ralph by Beverly Cleary ends. Now your teachers have been putting a lot of thought about what we want you to do or what kind of activity we might want to have you do as 
an end of the book activity. So we've had you do like our daily reading, small response um, items as we've read through the chapters. But now that we finished the entire book, we would like you to make a comic strip. So um, many of you like to draw. So we thought that it would be a fun way for you to summarize or retell the story in a way using pictures and words and making it fun. Um, some things to keep in mind, like what kind of characters we want to include. Um, we, some of our main characters were Ralph, the mouse, Garf, the boy, Katzo, who was the cat, and Sam, the dog. We could also include the ant and maybe Karen, but those four, Ralph, Garf, Katzo, and Sam are our four main characters. As for our setting, we know that our setting started in the Mountain View Inn and ends at Happy Acres Camp. So if you're going to do a comic strip for the entire book, you want to start at Mountain View Inn and then move your way to Happy Acres Camp. Um, add color. We want you to add words, so maybe that's talking or adding like a caption underneath a picture to explain kind of what is happening. Um, you can include, so you could do a comic strip for the whole story. So maybe it's like nine frames because there's nine chapters. So you do a picture for each chapter. You can obviously do more than that. Um, if you just want to pick a section of the book, like when he's at the Mountain View Inn or when he first gets to Happy Acres or right at the end of the book if you just want to pick a piece to illustrate that's okay um we want you to get creative do some interesting things with this when you are done have your parents take a picture of it and send it to your teacher that way once we start getting some we'll start posting them on our third grade website underneath the read aloud tab so that others can see um, the hard work that you've done to show your understanding of this story. Um, I will try to include a link below this video of where you can print out free um, comic book pages or if you want to draw them on your own, um, that's fine. We hope, you that, we hope that you've enjoyed this book and listening to your teachers read aloud. We know we've had a lot of fun recording this, these videos and are glad we can connect with you in that way. Um, hopefully you have a wonderful weekend and you stay happy and healthy. And we look forward to posting some new videos on Monday. We are going to start doing some mini lessons, some mini review lessons going over different topics from math and reading that we've talked about to give us our brains reminders to help us with those packets. So I believe if you tune in Monday, Mr. Nichols will be doing a lesson on comparing money. Have a great weekend. I miss you all. Bye.